Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. This is the day yes. that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We say to you all who are, who are here in person and on our conference call and Facebook, we greet you in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Whose hearts are pure, 
for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your glory, and the firmament show forth your handiwork. It is in the name of Jesus that we come at this hour of the morning. Asking, Lord, that you would forgive us for our trespasses. Thank you, Lord. Just since the last time we bowed, we ask your forgiveness. Thank you for another day. It is a mystery to us, Lord, but you let us sleep and slumber all night long. And then we rose to see another day. Another day. In our right mind, with health and strength, yes. the usefulness of our limbs and the activity of our bodies. And then we made it here to stronger hope one more time. Thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you today. We are so very grateful that we are able to come into the sanctuary where we can join our voices together yeah. to give you the praise, yeah. honor, and glory. Yeah. Now we thank you for our physical blessings, thank you, Lord. our mental blessings, thank you. our emotional blessings, yeah. our physical blessings, thank you, Lord. our relational blessings. Yeah. But most of all, we thank you for our spiritual blessings. Thank you, Lord. And at this hour, Father, we ask that we will gather our thoughts together and bring them all in the sanctuary. Let all of our thoughts in this hour be vertical. Yes. Because you are our only audience. Now Thank we pray for our pastor today. Touch him, Lord. Touch him. Reverend Nicholas Kevin Derwan Sr. Touch him, Lord. Touch oh, him. Oh, Lord, we just so glad that you let him come this way. Thank you, man. We can't thank you enough for him. But we ask that this day you will give him physical strength. Physical strength. And spiritual power. Please, sir, Jesus. And let him stand on the wall. Let our hearts be receptive to his word and our ears open. Not that we just want to hear, Lord, but we want to be moved. Yes, Lord. Now we ask that your spirit will rule in stronger hope today. Please, sir. All of our members are not in the sanctuary, but we ask that they will do the same. Touch, Lord. Gather their wondering thoughts and let you be the only audience. Lisa. Now, Lord, we thank you again thank for you. this day. Thank you. May all that we do as we rejoice in this day be to your glory. It is in the name of Jesus I pray. With thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord.
Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he has done great things. 
psalmist who said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, and forget not his many benefits. And we shall not forget all of the bountiful blessings and benefits that God has so graciously bestowed upon us because he's a gracious God and he's a merciful God and the least that we can do is tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. The least that we can do is lift our hands and open our mouths and our thank hearts you, Lord. Thank and you. tell thank the Lord you. with a sincere heart, Lord, thank you for being good to me. Has he been good to you lately? Oh, yes, he has. Come on, don't fool me now this morning. Yes, has he been yes. good to you? Has he brought you from a mighty long way? Has he seen you through danger, seen and unseen? I tell you, God doesn't need the praise. He deserves the praise. Amen. I wish you had a doctrinal church in the house. He doesn't, he doesn't need the praise now. Yes, sir. He deserves the praise. God don't need anything. Even if we choose not to give him the praise, God's still going to get the praise some way or another. He still will. He'll, he'll let the rocks cry out yeah. to give him praise. He'll let a storm brew in the ocean and make some noise just to give him the praise. He'll let the lightning zig and zag all throughout the midnight That's sky. Good. He'll let the stars shine against the canvas of a thousand Midnight. God will get the praise one yeah. way or okay, the other. Yeah. But the Bible says, the let Bible. everything, everything. Yeah. Church yeah. Now, yeah. let everything that has yeah. breath, yeah. praise ye the Lord. Yeah. Not inanimate things, but animate things. If there's breath in your body, yeah. if your heart is still beating, if your lungs are still breathing, yeah. if your brains are still thinking, if your fingers are still moving, if your feet are still going here, there, and everywhere, you ought to give God the praise, yeah. not because he needs the praise, but because God deserves yeah. the praise. Not yeah. because he needs the praise, but he deserves the praise yeah. because the Bible says great is the Lord and he's greatly to be praised. Can I just get a few people today yeah. who can say I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise, not my praise, but his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Did you come to the house of prayer? Did you come to his house today to join your voice with my voice and his yeah. voice with her voice and with one voice say, Lord, you're worthy. Yeah. Lord, you are good. Yeah. Lord, you are excellent. Yeah. If I had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to give you the, the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm so glad. So glad that God has been good to me. Mama. I'm so glad God doesn't treat me like we treat other people sometimes. Mm. God is unconditional Mama. in His love for us, yeah. and we give Him the praise. Yeah. We give Him the honor, yeah. and we give Him the glory. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. At this time, Deacon Books will come as we prepare for our offertory period. Amen. amen. Come on, don't stop right there because it's offering time. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Because truly he has been good to all of us. Amen. It is now that time where we give back unto God what is due to him. Amen. Amen. The Lord has truly been good to us. I mean, even through a pandemic, we haven't missed a meal. Even through the pandemic, we haven't lost our home. Even through the pandemic, we didn't lose our cause. Even through the pandemic, Stronger Hope was blessed that we just only lost one member. But we thank God every day for where he has brought us from. Amen. Amen. Now it's time to give what is due to God. Amen. You know, I always use Malachi 3, verses 6 through 10. If you do it right, God will bless it right. Amen. Now it is that time for us to give back unto God. Don't rob God. Because he hasn't robbed us. I got my hands. I got my arms. I got my legs. I got my mind. I got my tongue to talk. Amen. God has been good. To all of us, amen. So 
Let's give unto God. We have several ways. You know those ways to give. Amen. You can drop it off to our physical location. Amen. You can mail it to us. Amen. You can go to Cash App. Amen. You can even go to Givelify because I'm about to do mine through Givelify. Amen. But for those that are here, you can come and give to us in our touchless offering box. Amen. So let's come now and give as as one of our songbirds would give us some curriculum music to, to, to come to the table and give. Amen. 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 So let us come to God's table. Let me begin uh, offering this prayer unto the Lord for these gifts that we are about to receive. Oh, Lord, we thank you uh, for all of your bountiful blessings that thou has bestowed upon us. Lord, we we thank you for help. We thank you for strength. You. Now, Lord, as we receive these gifts, oh God, we ask that you will bless those who are about to give, those who have already given. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you in advance for those that will give later. Amen. Lord, we ask that you will bless them, oh God. Give back unto them their needs and their wants, oh God. According to your riches and glory, it is in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Let us come now. Those on my right, you may begin coming. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done. For me, oh, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Those on my left. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, I just want to pray. Thank 
say amen. Well, it's preaching time. Amen. Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, Praise Him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy to be. Come on and praise him. Oh, yes. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised from the rising from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same he's worthy he's worthy Jesus is worthy He's worthy to be praised. Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on and praise Him today. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. Now, Father in heaven, you have the words of eternal life. Yes, Lord. Where can we go? We pray, God, that you would continue to groom us, fashion us, shape us into Christians and disciples of Christ as you have designed us to be. We thank you for what your word says that you've given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. We thank you for the Holy Scriptures. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who brings to our remembrance what you've commanded us in the Holy Scriptures. It helps us to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, I pray that you would use me as your vessel, as always, to facilitate uh, the advancement of your kingdom 
as you renew minds and transform lives yes, through the power of your word. We believe that there is transforming power, yes. delivering power, Hallelujah. saving, sanctifying yes. power in your word. We repeat the words of Jesus in his high priestly prayer. Sanctify them by your truth. Yes, Lord. Your word is truth. Lord, we repeat the words of the psalmist. Lord, let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Oh, Lord, we repeat the words of the psalmist when he said, I've hidden your words in my heart and I might not sin against thee. Oh God, we thank you now for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Speak now, Lord, for your servants are listening. Use my mouth and my mind to declare the glorious gospel. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. years ago, a hip-hop song mm. entitled Smile. Oh, yeah. All right. Living my best life <laughs> became extremely popular. So much so that it became a part of of our cultural lingo. You would ask a person how they were doing mm -hmm. and they would respond with, I'm living. I'm living. My best life. Mm -hmm. Young and old. Yeah. Young and old. Were saying in their daily conversations, uh -huh. I'm living. I'm living. My best life. A brother could have one good eye, one leg shorter than the other, and only 12 teeth to show. But if you were to ask that brother on any given day how he was doing, he would say, I'm living, I'm living. my best life. All right, all right, all right, all right preacher. Now if... If you have not heard the unedited version mm. of this song, please, 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 do not go on the internet <laughs> looking for the original lyrics of this song because there are some filthy words and explicit language in that song that are not fitting for us to use. And I know most of you have heard it, but what you heard on the radio, what you heard on at the kickout, was the clean, edited version. Mm -hmm. But the comedian turned hip hop artist, Lil Duvall, was asked in an interview, what is your definition of living your best life? He said, and I quote, just living in your means. Mm. Living with whatever you have at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Being happy with it. Yeah. And when you're happy where you are, mm -hmm. you can grow even more. Yeah. All right. You're not chasing somebody else's perception. Now, there's some truth in that, yes. And as popular and as positive as that song was, our perception of living our best life can considerably fall short of living the life that Jesus described as the blessed life. Yes. 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 I don't know how you feel about it, my brothers and sisters, but my determination my determination as a Christian is to live what Jesus pronounced 
as the blessed life mm -hmm. over what I may envision as my best life. Because I can live my version of my best life and still not live what Jesus described as the blessed life. The blessed life. As we continue our sermon, summer series, summer at the Sermon on the Mount, I want to preach and teach from this thought-provoking question. Are you living a blessed life? Are you living the blessed life. Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 2 and Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 through 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them saying. One translation says, now when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, mm. blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, blessed. are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed, Blessed. are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed, Blessed. are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God or children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice. And be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Are you living the blessed life? Mm. Are you living the blessed life? The first words of this sermon on the mount delivered by Jesus comes to us in the form of eight declarations or eight pronouncements that all begin with the word blessed. Now I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, although the word blessed occurs nine times in Howard English translations. The original Greek of the Bible. The Greek word for blessed only occurs eight times in the original Greek language, only eight times within verses 3 to 10. And so verse 11 is only an expansion of verse 10, further explaining verse 10. So then, Jesus' sermon begins with eight declarations, eight pronouncements that describe those who are true citizens of the kingdom of God. Eight, eight pronouncements that characterize, Sister McCall, the current attitudes and the current actions of those who are According to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, partakers of the divine nature. Eight. Eight pronouncements, eight declarations that illustrate for us the great reversals 
of God's kingdom as opposed to a worldly kingdom. These eight blessings, these eight declarations could never describe the kingdom of this world. But the great reversal of the glorious gospel is these eight pronouncements and eight declarations describe the kingdom of God. That Greek word for blessed, according to one New Testament professor, that Greek word captures the idea of those who are the fortunate and blessed recipients of God's grace and God's favor. Yes. That word for bless indicates an existing state of happiness. Yes. An existing state of good fortune. Yes. Now I need to tell you that this is more than circumstantial feeling. Being blessed is not predicated on how you feel. Because some days you may not feel good. Some days you may not feel blessed. Some days you may not even feel like a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this existing state of blessedness, this existing state of Happiness is not predicated upon how I feel. It goes deeper than that. This is a deep sense of spiritual happiness and joy that is rooted to the reality that we are without a shred of doubt. According to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Do you know your Bibles right there? A holy nation. His own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This state of blessedness that I am in today and tomorrow. This state of blessedness that I was in yesterday and is in today and will be in tomorrow is rooted to that reality. It is rooted, rooted to the identity that God has given all of those who have confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And here's that identity. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. His own Special people. Eight Beatitudes. These eight Beatitudes describe the community of believers who find salvation and entrance into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven only through the person and work of Jesus. You know, some scholars like to understand the Beatitudes as a preamble, and an introduction to the rest of the sermon. Just as we have a preamble to the Constitution. Some scholars like to look at the Sermon on the Mount Beatitudes as a, a preamble. An introduction to the rest of the sermon. Well, I like to look at this, Brother Monado, these Beatitudes as a spiritual appetizer All right. to the rest of the sermon. All right. My wife and I, we love to eat out whenever we can. We love to eat out at formal and informal restaurants. The last time we had a very formal dining experience was at the Ruth Chris Steakhouse. You know, the one by the casino. 
and it was fine dining. And Brother Jones, when I saw the price of that cowboy ribeye, I said, Lord, have mercy. But I've discovered that whether you are dining formally or informally, one of the first words that you will hear from the waiter or waitress is this, can I start you off with an appetizer? And if you got big money, you're going to start off with an appetizer. Oh yes, I have the crab cakes. Is that right, Rachel? I'll have the crab cakes. I'll have the spinach dip. For some of you light eaters, I'll have the salad. I'll have the char broad oysters. My brothers and sisters, Jesus, the new Moses, but greater than Moses, Jesus, our great prophet is preparing us, Missionary McCall, to receive the rest of the Sermon on the Mount with this spiritual appetizer known to us as the Beatitude. Let me give you my sermon in a sentence. If you don't get anything else, if you forget the funny, humorous phrase, spiritual appetite, if you forget all of the bells and whistles of the sermon, please remember this. And it is this. What Jesus meant when he described the blessed life, blessed life. means the same thing for believers today. That is the sermon in a nutshell. That is what you take home with you. What Jesus meant when he described the blessed life means the same thing for believers today. One of the cardinal rules of Bible interpretation is that the Bible can never mean today what it never meant yesterday. All right. And as one who rightly divides the word of truth, I've got to go into the zip code of the ancient world. Cross that great and wide hermeneutical bridge and find out what did the word mean to the ancient original audience of yesteryear. When I catch and grasp that meaning from yesterday, I then cross that bridge and come back to the world that I'm living in now, the contemporary world. The Bible can never mean today what it never meant yesterday. And what Jesus meant when he described the blessed life means the same thing for believers today. If you're going to live the blessed life, you must listen to the voice of Jesus. And the Bible says he opened his mouth and taught them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. But theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. What does that mean? What does it mean, Missionary Jones, to be poor in spirit? It means to have a perpetual, personal perception of ourselves. That without God and apart from the grace of God, we are absolutely nothing. That's what it means. The poor in spirit recognize that without God, they are deficient. 
Without God, they are destitute. Without God, they are hopeless. Without God, they are helpless. Even Brother Johnson, with our best personal righteousness, we joyfully file for spiritual bankruptcy. Yes, sir. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, we joyfully yes, file for spiritual bankruptcy because without him, we can do nothing. Yes, I'm wondering if there's some redeemed folk in the house yes. who can say one day I filed for spiritual bankruptcy. I came to the fountain of living waters and said to him, I need you to take over my life. We need God. We are spiritually crippled, unclean, powerless, unworthy, undeserving, capricious humans who need God's unchanging word to light our way. Oh yes, we are in the words. Just the cry. We are in the we are in the words of the black deacon's prayer. We are empty pictures before a full fountain. Please to have mercy. We are in the words, deacon God and of the hymnologists who sung melodiously without him. I could do nothing. Have I got a witness in the house? Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be rugged like a ship without a sail. Like a pencil with no point, I'm pointless. Like a fish out of the water, Sister Mills, I'm lifeless. Like a ship without a sail, I am aimless. I need God. This verse Beatitude, Missionary Brown promotes sincere humility. Isn't that interesting? That the very first Beatitude deals with humility. It promotes sincere humility, not superficial humility. Sincere humility because humility is a part of the narrow way into the kingdom of God. Hear what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 2 through 3. He says, or it reads, Then Jesus called a little child to him, sat him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I take delight in my poverty of spirit. He said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What did Jesus mean when he said this second beatitude? I've come to tell you this morning that the greatest most important situation and condition that we can mourn over is our own sin. Yes. Oh, there are many things to mourn over in the world. Oh, yes. Sister Jenkins, there are many things that break our hearts. There are many things that will leave us heartbroken. There are many things in this life that are unrighteous that will cause us to soak our pillows with our tears. And rightfully so. But the greatest, the greatest and most important situation and condition that we could ever mourn is our own sin. Because it was our sin that God the Father laid upon the shoulders of 
the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And he took our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And just the thought that my sin caused Jesus to go to the cross and die for me should break my heart. Our morning is in the context of our awareness of the holiness and righteousness of God, which in turn results in an awareness of our wretchedness and wickedness. Or oh, the more you see God for who he is, that's the more you'll see who you are. The more you take on that posture of Isaiah the prophet in the sixth chapter of his book, the more you see God high and lifted up. Mm. The more you see the train of his robe filling the temple, the more you hear the seraphim saying one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Almighty, that's the more you say about yourself, oh wretched man that I am. Oh, I? In the words of Paul, who shall deliver me from this body of death? James chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Mm -hmm. Write that down. James chapter 4, verses 8 through 10 is the true mourner's bench. Okay, now. Mm. Thank God for the mourner's bench during those great awakenings of the church. Thank God for those strategies that those revivalists would use in those days of yesteryear to bring sinners to God. But I want to tell you that James chapter 4, verse 8 through 10 is that perpetual mourner's bench that all believers must experience and continue to experience because if we are to be honest with ourselves, we all need forgiveness. Yeah. We need to be revived at times and comforted because we still fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. James says, draw near to God. Yeah. He will draw near to you. James says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. He's writing to the church and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. I must mourn over my sin. I must mourn over my sin against God because my sins, my sins are not some casual inconsequential mistake. When Nick Jr. accidentally drops my coffee, <laughs> that's a mistake. Mm. Mr. Williams, if Rachel accidentally shrinks my favorite sweater in the dryer, mm. That's a mistake. Mm. Now she hasn't done that, y'all. <laughs> She's living as an analogy. But when we sin, Mama. whether it is known or unknown, intentional or unintentional, whether it is a sin in which we knew we should have done something good, but still refused to do it, our sin in which we took action, some, some thought, some word, or some deed. Our sins are always against God. David pins in the 51st number of Psalm, against you. You only mm. have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. And you know the story of David's sin. You know that he had another man's wife. You know that he tried to cover up his adultery with murder. But 
what David says against you. You only have I sinned mm -hmm. and done this evil in your sight. That great African theologian, St. Augustine, great thinker of the Christian faith, will explain to us in his book entitled The Confessions that sin is only sin in the sight of a holy God. So I take the light. I hope you do. I take the light in my grief over my own sin because God comforts me with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I take the light today. I know that sounds backwards. I know that sounds paradoxical. Happy, for taking responsibility and then mourning over your own sin. But God in turn comforts me with the gospel. Yeah. And you know what the gospel says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7? In him. In him. We have redemption yeah. through his blood. Uh -huh. The forgiveness of sins. You know what the gospel says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, yeah. he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what David said in his own beatitude in Psalm 32? Blessed, Blessed. is he whose transgression is forgiven, yeah. whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. Then next, Jesus said, and I'll, I'll finish the rest, maybe during Bible study. I've got to leave you now. Bless, bless. Bless. Bless are the meek. I thought somebody was going to get like Dr. Percy Smith and say, don't close. <laughs> don't close, man. Don't close. Don't close. Don't close, brother. <laughs> Finally for today, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I love watching those Campbell's chunky soup commercials. Mm -hmm. I'm closing. I love watching those commercials. Campbell's chunky soup with those NFL football players. Mm -hmm. You had you had big, physically strong players who were able to play the game of football at amazing levels and perform feats of strength that the ordinary person can't do. But in that very same commercial, here comes their mother. Mother tells them in a commanding voice to sit down and eat your soup. Here you have a strong guy who's able to physically pick up his mother if he wanted to and move out of the way. But here you have a, a physically strong guy being told to sit down and eat it up by his mother. Mm -hmm. You know what happens in that commercial, brothers and sisters? That big, strong football player humbles himself, sits down, yeah. and eats the soup. All right. It's not that the football player has lost any strength. It's not that when the when his mom comes in, the football player loses power and speed and agility and ability. None of that has changed. But now, his power is in submission mm. to a higher power. Yeah, yeah. And I want to submit to you today in closing that a meek person is not a weak person. That's right, that's right, that's right.
Come on, let the church say amen. amen. A meek person is not a weak person, but a strong person. And it really takes a strong person to be able to exercise self-control over the strength that they have. A strong person who realizes where his or her strength comes from and then uses that strength to submit to Jesus yeah. and serve Jesus. Right. It takes a meek person to be able to say, Lord, not my will. But my will. Let your will be done. Yeah. Jesus says, they will inherit the earth. Such eschatological hopes in that last phrase. Uh -huh. Big fancy twenty-five dollar word, but let me give you the twenty-five yes. cents meaning. It simply means the study of the end time, That's right. mm. how things will turn out when the last days come to a fulfillment. And Jesus says, "They will. They will. Not they may, but they will. Will inherit." The earth. Who will inherit the earth? Jesus, the meek. One day, God will recreate the heavens and the earth. Yes, sir. If you know your Bible, according to John's vision in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, there will be a new heaven. Yeah. There will be a new earth. And there will be a new Jerusalem. You keep reading John's vision and he said that there are 12 gates. I wish I had a church in the house. That's right, that's 12 right. gates to the new city of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And there shall be no more death. No more death. Are you glad about it? Yes, there shall be no more sorrow and no more crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things right. have passed away and the meek. The meek. The meek shall inherit this new earth. Oh, will you be there? Yeah. If you're meek, you're going to inherit that new earth. In this new earth, the wicked will cease from troubling. And the weary will be at rest. In this new earth, the unrighteous are not so. But every day is Sunday, and the Sabbath will have no end. Jesus says, bless all the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Oh, for, I'm just want to encourage you today. Are you living the blessed life? My man, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Are you living the blessed life? Do you take the light in your spiritual poverty? Essentially saying, without God, I'm nothing. Do you take the light in the fact that you are blessed because you realize that your sins are against God? But God comforts you with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Do you take delight today in the fact that the meek shall inherit the earth? That meekness is not weakness, but it is strength under control. And you've yielded your strength and your control to the will of God by saying, Not my will, but yours be done. Right. And one day, my brothers and sisters, when it is all said and done, when the last days come to an end, when the Lord God brings that new city from the sky and shows us that new heaven and that new earth and that new Jerusalem, only the meek. Only the meek. Only the meek shall inherit the earth. Bless you, Reverend. Do Bless you, Reverend. Amen. We open up the doors of the church. There may be someone who wants to accept the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord. as their Lord and Savior. Come unto Jesus while you have time. Come unto Jesus. May your mind he will make your life brand new oh he will take care of you come to Jesus
Jesus. While you have time. Amen. To God be the glory. We'll have some announcements. Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor, for the blessed life. Amen. Amen. We are so excited at what is going on here at the Stronger Hope Baptist Church. Um, on last Sunday, and many of you got the message. Our beloved, illustrious pastor was appointed the director of the Ministerial Alliance for the Ideal Missionary Baptist and Educational Association. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then on Monday, I think I'm stealing Sister Dickerson's thunder. On Sunday, Monday, our wellness director got up and did her message with the help of our church nurse, Jermaine Carter, and some of the ushers, amen, job well done, amen. Sister Cynthia Bush. And then, I think I'm right on Tuesday night, our pastor showed out again with his doctrine of sermon, amen. And then, I think it was Thursday night, uh, no, Wednesday night, the layman hour was conducted, and our very own brother Edward Russell, who is the president of the layman, did a marvelous job, amen. Uh, we are still showing that we are the BEST, out of the R-E-S-T, amen? Amen. And you know, of course, our president, Dr. J.C. Dyson, is phenomenal at leading this association in higher heights after his father, the late great Dr. J.C. Prophet Jr., amen? Um, he's not trying to fill his daddy's shoes, but to make his own, amen? Amen. And this month, um, our wellness director dropped off some paperwork that this month is uh, Men's Health Month. As you can see that I'm wearing a blue ribbon, which represents Men's Health Month. We do have some literature brothers to tell us at what age and what type of exams we should be having. Uh, we are um, need to take care of ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we are so happy to see Brother Theodore Lewis Jr. sharing with us today. Amen. God bless you, my brother. It is good to see you. And just keep your hand in God's hand. Amen. And I think that's all I have. Missionary Dickerson. Jackson gave her address 
uh, on the other evening. And I am still soliciting your prayers and your financial support. Membership is only $25 for the year. Please see me immediately following service so that I may give you a registration form and you can register uh, with the Woman's Auxiliary of the Ideal Missionary Baptist Education. Also, I have these few moments. I would like for you to register and subscribe, that is, to the National Baptist Woman. That subscription is only $15. And I assure you that I will see that we are placed in that national magazine.
As a young man, how can you stay on the right road? Read the book. Read the book. Read, the book. Read, the book. Read about Jesus in the Gospel of John. Read a psalm every day. Read a proverb every day. You have 31 proverbs, which means you have a proverb for every day out of the month. Read a psalm because sometimes your spirit might be down. You may need to read David when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. and I shall have one. Read this book. Let God speak to you through this holy Bible. And when you let God direct your paths, Brother Samuels, you can't go wrong. And so on behalf of the Strong Old Baptist Church, where the word of God wipes our way, I want to present you this Bible. Amen. church say amen. amen. Oh, come on, let the church say amen for the mighty God we serve. And so good. So good. All right, well, if there's nothing else, let us stand to our feet. Let us stand to our feet. And let us look to God, our help and our strength. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.